Good evening and thanks so much for stopping by. Today I want to start out with Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So earlier this week I received an email from a viewer by the name of John and in the email he explained to me that he had been working with King of Glory Ministries and not actually working but had met Lois Vocal Sharp and her husband Gary Sharp and also you'll see in her video when she was uh, going to the alien conference after she returned he's well, at that time mentioned that she had gone to uh, well to lunch with him while he was there I believe lunch or breakfast I'm not sure what it is but he contacted me and let me know that he was sending an actual letter to Lois Vogel Sharp, the actual ministry, regarding the concerns, doctrinal concerns he had, and he wanted me to look over the letter. He also had his personal minister look over the letter also, and, and I want to thank him for reaching out to me regarding it. He said that he had actually found my video by chance as he had been praying over it. Um, regarding it and I also posted he posted it also on the comment section in a couple of my videos I did and he did also so I'm just gonna go ahead and read it to you and I also had the pleasure of speaking with him on the phone regarding it so it starts like this dear Gary and Lois it is after much internal struggle and conviction from the Holy Spirit that I found myself writing this letter to you it is with Jesus's love and mercy that I'm even writing this to you at all because if it was up to me, I would choose not to. The Lord has been weighing heavily on my mind of late to let you two know what I've observed when I was at your house. And he also said that he had spent uh, some time, some weekends there, uh, trying to work on the land and different things for them. I believe that God had sent me there to learn more about your ministry and to see for myself firsthand what you were all about. He has told me I must write this communication to you even though you will probably not agree with what I'm about to say. I wish I did not have to point out these things, but I feel the Lord wants me to point them out to you so that you may ha be able to correct them and repent of the, some of the way of your teachings ways in your teaching, excuse me. And the following outline was shown to me along with the biblical verses that back them up. This is all brought to you in love and faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Number one, your constant use of the one, two, four time frame is not found anywhere in the Bible, and neither is your concept of safe havens, which you claim are prophecies from God. If they cannot be checked against biblical verses, then they are not from the Lord our God. This is, in fact, adding to the Bible. And there's, and so here are some biblical verses about that. That's, he put in there Proverbs chapter 35 and 6, Deuteronomy chapter 4, 2, and Revelation chapter 22 and 18, 9. And so I'm going to go ahead and post this once again so you can look these up yourself also. Number two, your belief that everyone who was born again and has received the Holy Spirit must speak in tongues is also against scripture. And he's using 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 through 31. Talks about how the gifts of the Holy Spirit will be divided among the disciples as the Lord sees fit and how all of these parts fit together as one body to serve the Lord. I will add into that, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you have never spoken in tongues, Yes, you are are what we would call saved, full of full full of the Holy Spirit. The minute you believe on His name, the Holy Spirit comes in you. Whether you speak in tongues or not, that's up to to the Holy Spirit. You can ask to speak in tongues. I speak in tongues, but I did ask for that gift. But He's correct in that there is nothing, there is no precept in the Bible that says that you must speak in tongues before you're saved. Okay. This is, we're not talking about when Acts, that the Holy Spirit came on them, they were speaking in cloven, cloven tongues. Yes, I do realize that, but he is correct in that. Number three, Gary is obviously not head of your ministry or your marriage. In that, I witness how Lois runs the household and the ministry, and Gary does whatever Lois says. This is very wrong, according to the Bible, as well as 1 Timothy chapter 2, 12 through 15, 
says enough about this. While at your residence, I witnessed firsthand Lois's hostile, angry attitude toward any brothers and sisters in Christ who disagree with what she says, which shows her arrogance, pride, and even hatred toward her fellow man. That's Ecclesiastes chapter 7, 9, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, uh, 2 through 3, Galatians chapter 5, 23, Romans chapter 12, 3, and Luke chapter 18, 9. All speak well on this subject. Your prophecy that there would be a huge depression in our country before Christmas 2019 that would be worse than the Great Depression did not come true, which makes it a false prophecy. Deuteronomy chapter 18, 20 through 22 covers this nicely and precisely. And she said that throughout the year that it would be the crash of the century 2019 and it did not happen. And you can double check on some of her videos for that, for those. While at your house, I noticed Lois saying that she didn't fit in with the local residents and laughed and mocked at them as though she were better than them. She seems to want to separate herself from the common people as someone more important and worthy of God. And he's using chapter Matthew chapter 20, 16, Ephesians chapter 4, 2. Both cover this nicely. While, number seven, while spending time with you at your home, and out in public, I noticed that Lois had no patience with Gary and oftentimes got very upset and angry with him and anyone else who disagreed with her. She reacts quickly and sharply to any criticism against her instead of absorbing what the other person is saying, thinking on it and then responding calmly, thinking on it and then responding calmly with love. That's James chapter 1, 4 and Romans chapter 4, 3 through 5 covers this quite well. Number eight, Lois, you expressed worry to me that there would not be a stock market crash in following the Great Depression as you had predicted, which showed me that you were more worried about your own reputation as a prophet of God than the millions of people that who would suffer from such financial calamity. Very sad, really. These verses cover that very well. That's 1 Samuel 2, 3 and Isaiah chapter 13, 11. I think I'm going to also read first because this one just really jumped out at me. First Samuel chapter 2, 3. Let me go over here. I appreciate your patience as we, run, as we read through this. Uh, our letter from going to uh, King of Glory Ministries here. First Samuel chapter 2, 3. Talk no more so exceeding proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. I thought that was that was an excellent verse. Now, uh, number nine, I did notice that you had received several high dollar items from your followers, and it seemed to enjoy using them for your own entertainment, i.e. expensive ATVs and firearms, not to mention all the gold and silver given to you, which is in your huge safe. This in no way exemplifies charity or selfless service, but rather shows greed and covetedness. Luke chapter 12, 15 through 35 covers this nicely. And we'll run over here to Luke. I was going to use, read the first two verses, and he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetedness, for a man's life consists not of abundance of the things which he possesses. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And when you, uh, you can go through that a little bit later, and you'll find out what happens uh, to that rich man. Lois, no, number 10, Lois, you say in your videos, to not to advertise that you love Jesus Christ by wearing shirts that have the name of Jesus on them, etc. Because there are demonic forces that are attacking Christians out there right now. That sounds as though you're telling people to be ashamed of Jesus and his gospel. That is in complete disagreement with the defiance of Jesus. According to the scriptures, Romans chapter 1, 16, Luke chapter 9, 26 to 27, and Mark chapter 8, 38. 
outline this very concretely. These are the last two things are more of personal sin items that I am praying that you will work out on it. Work on as well. While helping you fix up your house on weekends, I was very aware of a sense of sluggish, sloth-like laziness, where it seemed like the only person reason, excuse me, reason anything was getting done was because I was there. Ecclesiastes 10, chapter 10, verse 18, and Proverbs chapter 6, verses 6 through 8 cover these errors. This went hand in hand with the propensity for gluttony, as you two never seem to stop eating with no signs of fasting or any self-control. This is not treating your body like God's temple. Proverbs chapter 23 20 through 21 covers these sins. I do realize that I am fairly new to the family of God. And you think I don't know what I'm talking about, but Jesus says in his good book, Matthew chapter 21, verse 16, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. Psalms 8, 2 also covers this. I do not mean to condemn either one of you, Lois and Gary, and the only, and only bring this to your attention because the Holy Spirit has brought this to my attention and is convicting me to tell you these things so that you may correct your ways and not continue to lead others astray. Yes, yeah, just a little more here. Gary, step up and take command of the ministry in your family and Lois. Keep telling people to love each other as Jesus has loved us and to repent from their evil ways and accept Jesus as their savior and to fight against the evil abominations in our country and around the world. The rest is just heresy. Remember to only reply to evil with love and let God the Father be our avenger. In Christ, I pray for you both with love and peace. Walk with the Lord in faith and praise. Amen. No need to respond to this letter for I'm only relaying information to you that I was told to from God the Father. So now, of course, Lois did respond, and it's actually Gary that responded, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, read the response letter to that. Shame on you. Again, your ignorance is screaming from within your soul. Better go and read the Bible again, and you are listening to a demon, not the Holy 